Just a quick disclaimer. You may see Salty Jungle kind of emerge a little bit in this video. Overall, these are two of my favorite people in blockchain, Brad Garlinghouse, David Schwartz. But if that type of thing triggers you, come back tomorrow. It'll be a totally bullish video, full of excitement, fun, cheer. But uh, I'm telling you right now, as we work through this video, I might get a little bit testy at certain points. If you're fine with that, stick around. You guys ever disagreed on anything as it pertains to XRPL or or Ripple in this time? And how have you gone over maybe some of those disagreements? I, the only thing I can think of that we've really disagreed on at times is sort of how much Ripple can do. How many projects can we take on? Is it a, is it a, a small number of things that we think are really big, or a large number of things that we think are interesting but not necessarily, you know, not necessarily world changing? So this is sort of the scope. And of course, that's evolved over time as Ripple's resources have evolved. I, I'll just add, I think I truly say this. I'm not just saying because he's sitting here, but I think David Schwartz is one of the smartest people I've ever met. And so it's Genius. really hard to disagree with someone that you think is that smart. <laughs> like, if I disagree, it's like, okay, I'm doing something wrong. No, I actually, I actually do warn people frequently that I can be very persuasive even when I'm wrong. He does. So they should actually. Yeah. Be. He can be very persuasive and he doesn't back down and he can be spectacularly wrong a lot of times you got to be careful with david in some ways he could be the pied piper leading you down a a path of destruction here i think back to when he said well DeFi, that stuff that's kind of iffy but micro payments that's going to be the first thing that leads to mass adoption guy's human makes mistakes and it's hard to argue with him but look at that guy you got to be careful with this guy i'm telling you genius or not uh, he, he can lead you down the wrong path from time to time as can anyone but again you have this problem because he is so smart it is hard uh, to go against him and sometimes you should just be careful careful he has done that to and that because if, if i'm wrong and i persuade brad that i'm right that benefits nobody <laughs> But look, I, I think he's uh, incredibly smart, incredibly passionate. Uh, his his more recent adoption of be, trying to be a comedian on Twitter, <laughs> I'm less impressed with. We sometimes disagree with his... I, I did call him a number of times, encouraging him to think about things he was posting on Twitter. I like his jokes. <laughs> My wife's threatening but... to buy me new joke books. You've got your wife on one side and Brad on the other trying to rein <laughs> you in to no avail. Uh, let's maybe talk about the evolution of uh, Ripple as a firm and XRPL. Uh, Here we how go. How have uh, the sort of, how has it changed, right, in terms of what people might think of it and, and what it's sort of become today? I think from the earliest stages, some things have remained constant. You know, very early on, we decided we weren't trying to be a consumer outreach play. We wanted to play at kind of the infrastructure enterprise side of things. And you know, early on when I joined the company, and David predates me by a couple of years, uh, when I joined Ripple, you know, we were trying to do a number of things uh, around smart contracts with Codius, around identity, you know, just listening to David speak this morning. It's interesting to see thematically how some of these things are still relevant and still omnipresent. But we decided to really focus on payments at the time. As David has suggested, we have subsequently kind of expanded beyond that. You know, we, we now have, at the time when I joined, we had about 80 people. Now we have hundreds and hundreds of people. And so I feel like we can do more things. Let me add this. Uh, first of all, working with institutions, they made that call because they thought that was the safer route. David's talked about this in the past. Originally, Ripple started out with retail use cases. And the thought process was, look, if you're working with institutions, they're supposed to do their own due diligence. We're not going to have as many problems with regulators. They ended up getting sued anyway. Uh, at this point in time, legal stuff is kind of settled out. And while we are in the state of ambiguity, I agree Ripple should stand pat and just continue on with what they're doing. But the minute... And I mean the minute we have clear rules and regulations in this country, Ripple's got to roll out uh, retail use cases because that base will use anything. We're going to talk about it here uh, uh, shortly, but anything they put out, retail will jump all over. They respect Ripple. They want to use their products. You have a huge market there 
just ready to jump in here and use anything to do with Ripple, where it's more of a struggle to get institutions on board. I think once we have clear laws, they got to jump in there and, uh, you know, leverage their goodwill with, with the retail user of cryptocurrencies that respects the work they do, because that liquidity, it spends just as good as the institutional liquidity. And I, I think it would be massive. Again, you need clear laws. You don't want to, you know, get up a new uh, lawsuit of some sort. But it's a huge opportunity going forward. I don't buy for a minute that they're not interested in retail use cases. And when we see, uh, you know, with finality, some regulations roll out here, I think you'll see them jump in there in a big way. Uh, but I will say, I think the, the culture of Ripple, I hope we continue. And frankly, the culture of the whole XRP community, which has just been phenomenal, is like, how do you create small groups who get a lot of shit done? Mm -hmm. As opposed to, you know, layers and layers. Like, Here we let's, go. Let's try stuff. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. We, we try again. You know, we built something called Liquidity Hub, uh, I guess, three years ago, which really didn't play out the way we thought. And some people would say, oh, we failed. Like, I'm, I, we succeeded by trying something new in a nascent, exciting space. It didn't develop the way we thought it would. We decided that's not the right place for us to focus. Let's put those resources somewhere else. Mm. What a wonderful attitude. Just a beacon of sunshine here. Look, Apple, Apple computers, they spent a billion dollars a year trying to build a new EV. And after a decade, $10 billion down the drain, they decided, you know what? We're scrapping that. We can't compete. Project's dead. This happens when you're trying to create the future. But the problem is, if you're going to have an Apple EV car failure, you got to have some iPhone, some iPad, some MacBooks, you gotta have some success. Everything you try cannot fail. And to date, when you look at the investments Ripple's made, you know, ever so often they'll have some new exciting product they're rolling out. They'll all make videos, a bunch of other YouTubers will make videos, will tell you how amazing this is. And of course the great Ripple will succeed and it never does. It always fails, it always fails. It's always a disaster, whether it's you know, coil, uh, micro payments and blogging and just nightmare after nightmare, omni storage uh, and just all the services that uh, Ripple's rolled out. They keep trying to change the name of on demand liquidity. It's not getting adoption uh, any better, no matter how many times they try to repackage that thing. Uh, you know, they have to get a win and a big win. And it's not like, oh, well, we're trying different things. Great. But some of the things you try, you have to have big success. I'm telling you right now, if we come back three years and he's on this stage and like, oh, we tried to do a stable coin and well, it just didn't work out. We needed to put our resources elsewhere. Forget it. I'm telling you right this moment, they have to get stable coins correct. And they should. The XRP ledger will give you a world-class experience. Three second settlement times, cheap payments. You know, you trust Ripple so you can trust their stable coin you would have to be a buffoon to fumble this. They have to hit stable coins and release, you know, a top notch product and get adoption. And there's no reason why they can't. They got the money, the funding, they can get the listing. So you have the on ramps and off ramps on exchanges. They could get this done, but it's do or die for this company. They got to get a win. They cannot post another loss. He can laugh it off. Look, Liquidity Hub had nothing to do with XRP. It just shows that Ripple has a problem coming up with a business idea, launching it and scaling that product or service to a successful level. It ain't funny. It's not a joke. And it's continuous failure after failure after failure. They got to get it done with stable coins and they should. They should dominate, but they got to execute. We can't have any more of this Mickey Mouse nonsense going on. Brad better get this sucker done or it's going to be a big problem. If their stablecoin launch is not successful, this company is in big, big trouble. And that is my opinion on the situation. Just to clarify, I'm usually on the do fewer things side of that argument. Mm. Do something. So what sort of uh, technical impediments do you think the ledger has faced over the past uh, since, since the origins? And how have you overcome those? There really have not been that many technical impediments. It's kind of surprising how well these things work technically. I mean, they're not infinitely scalable. There's always fear of security issues, but there haven't really, at least in the XRP ledger space, knock on wood, you know, we really haven't had technical problems. 
I think the biggest problem, and I, I talked about it a little bit just a few minutes ago, it, because of the XRP Ledger's design, it's different from other blockchains in, in some important ways. So like transaction fees are very small because there is nobody who's profiting from it. That's good. It's fixed function, which means you don't have some of the security problems that you have with smart contracts. But the downside is that adding new features is slow. Mm. And that's a, that's a, so like, you know, when you wanted, when you, AM, and adding the AMM feature took two years. It's great. It came out really nicely, but it would have, you know, other blockchains probably could have deployed something much faster. And, did. and, and Brad wants important. to do a thousand different things. So that makes it challenging. <laughs> Yeah. I think, you know, one thing that you can't take away is the original design of the XRP ledger. The fact that there is there's nothing like it in the world. You know, it is a top cryptocurrency globally, no matter what government comes after us, what reptilian comes crawling from under a rock. It just continues to chug along. And when you take a look at everything, it's so finely tuned. It's still world class for payments and settlements. And we can go back and nitpick and say, well, maybe we should have, uh, you know, really went hard into smart contracts because we see what's happened with all these layer one smart contract blockchain uh, systems out there. You know, that, again, is just looking in the past, uh, you know, with everything we know now, maybe it'd be different. But I think still say they are set up well to dominate going forward. Uh, again, it'll be quite complementary to all these other systems. And again, there's nothing else like it. So there is no really competitor. You could say XLM. I really don't think that is a competitor to the XRP Ledger. Uh, you know, XRP Ledger should win out every time against XLM. So I think they're positioned well. They're building in the right areas. They are looking to use this uh, system in a practical manner, bringing stable coins, AMMs, bridging, real world assets. Like, don't get me wrong with that rant I just had about Ripple. I think they're going to do very well here. But it's do or die time. It ain't time to laugh around, joke around, tell jokes on Twitter. It's time to get it done, to dominate as they should. As a company that is leveraging a great technology with unlimited money, you know, with just a lot of respect out there from crypto users and investors. And it's just going to play well as this thing goes mainstream and you got a U.S. company behind this technology that works with other, you know, real people out there. This is going to be popular. But we got to have a success, and I think it starts with stable coins. They got to show they can execute and scale a su successful product or service. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to argue with that. So, Waltz, well, there haven't been that many technical challenges per se, um, although maybe not being able to move as fast as you would like to is one of them. There have been a lot of just macro and, and general crypto problems that have trickled down to XRPL and, and the firm Ripple as well. Um, but those seem to be improving, Brad. Is that, is that a fair take? I mean, at least from a regulatory perspective, XRP is now backlisted on Coinbase and trading. That's good news. Um, but it's not 100% maybe where the industry would need it or want it to be. Yeah. I mean, look, I think as you reflect on the last handful of years, we'll call it four or five years, there are things that are super frustrating. You know, why did the SEC go after XRP kind of first, if you will? Uh, you know, in some ways, you look at that now and you say, we're almost at the very, very end of that journey. I think that, you know, hopefully we have resolution. Uh, we, we can't control that now. The judge, you know, will make the decision when she makes the decision. I, but my estimation is sometimes in sometime before the end of the summer, somebody asked me, is that the end of August? I pointed out <laughs> that September 21st is the end of summer. So, I don't know, sometimes there. All right, they're going to joke around about... The seasons but i'll tell you this one thing you can't take away from these guys david schwartz's original design you know i think you're going to see this used as we start seeing rwas become a prime time segment of cryptocurrencies i think you'll see that original vision you know come to light and really show massive growth and adoption the guy's a genius he built the future and i think we're just going to start catching up to his original vision Brad Garlinghouse, there's two things you can't take away from him. When he became CEO of Ripple, they were an acquisition target. They were going to be bought out by Stripe. He's turned them into a multi-billion dollar powerhouse. And the XRP ledger itself, in terms of growth and adoption, when, when Brad took over, we were turning about $400,000 or $400, a day in daily volume. We, uh, the token price was under six-tenths of a cent. Like, we've seen a lot of growth in this space under his leadership there being the leader of Ripple, the biggest uh, player within the XRP ecosystem. 
Like they both have done uh, very well, and that's without a doubt. And lastly, really, Brad, you know, steering the ship through a very, very stressful situation where personally he was being sued for an awful lot of money. Uh, the company under attack, the future of XRP, you know, we were confident, but the rest of the world was not. And, you know, he steered that ship through to, in our, our most important moment, there he did get a victory. I can quabble about Liquidity Hub, but when it was all on the table and it was uh, all on the line here, he got the job done and really guided this company and this ecosystem all the way through to the most important victory in crypto history. So while I get irritated with these guys, they both are legends no matter what happens going forward. And I expect a lot of success because now all that focus that got us through that very tough period where you couldn't build, you couldn't expand, you couldn't roll out new features. They can take that off of fighting for your life and just focus on building and being creative and launching successful businesses. So I expect big things from the people on this stage. And I think they're going to get it done, but it's go time. It has to happen now. We cannot... You know, meet back here in a couple of years and laugh about how stable coins or any of these other things fail. They cannot fail. They got to get it done. But if anyone could, I think it'd be these two guys. Let me know what you think down below. As always, please like, please subscribe. The revolution will be televised right here on Jungle Inc.